Hi everyone again, it's Rob at ASFC Chemistry. I'm just going to run through some copper 2 chemistry, uh, which you need to know for the upper 6 specification. Now this is very specific to the OCR A level in chemistry. I know the AQA1 has a little difference here when it comes to some of the copper chemistry you need to know. So those of you doing AQA for instance, please make sure that you look up the slight alternatives that there are available for this. So the equations you need to know for the copper 2 plus chemistry are when you're reacting the copper 2 plus ion in its hexaaqua formation. So remember, you use the square brackets at the start Cu H2O6. Let me put the 2 plus. You need to know what happens when this reacts with OH minus ions from sodium hydroxide. You need to know what happens when this reacts with Cl minus ions from HCl. And you need to know what happens when this reacts with ammonia from ammonia. Now all of these are examples of potential ligands as well. We mentioned what a ligand was before, but a ligand, and these are all monodentate examples, a ligand is a molecule or ion which donates a pair of electrons to form a coordinate bond with a transition metal ion. So what's happening with this first one at the start up here then? So what's happening up here? Well, we need to take the Cu2 plus ion and we're going to consider it aqueous which means we don't need to write it out in this large hexaaqua formation here. And we're going to react to that with 2 moles of OH-. I know it's 2 moles because it's a 2 plus charge up here. And this is going to be aqueous, and a good tip is if it has a charge, it tends to be aqueous. Over here then, so what am I going to form? I'm going to form really easily, and that's a solid, Sorry for cramming that solid just in there. We're going to form this blue precipitate. So this is a blue solution going to a blue precipitate. You might say, okay, but we use sodium hydroxide for this. Where are the sodiums? You don't need to put them in. So don't put them if you don't have to. Try and keep it simple. What's happening then with this Cl- example down here then? Okay, well, you will be told in the exam, for instance, that this is coming from HCl, but you don't need to show the HCl. You don't need to show that there. You just need to show the ligand and how it's involved. So what we're going to have for this one is we're going to have the full hexaaqua complex ion. And we're going to be reacting this with 4Cl-. And what we're going to do is perform a full ligand substitution. So I'm going to show this equation on the next line so I don't run out of space for you. What we then form, and you don't have to show the square brackets of this next one, but I do like to. I like a bit of consistency. Should be four. Two minuses up there. So we've got CuCl4, two minus, and then we've got all six H2Os are over on this side. So now what? Why have I only got four? The reason we only have four CLs is because the Cl minus ligand, the chloride ligand, is too big. And so because of its size, we can't fit the six and have the octahedral that we had over here. We have to have a tetrahedral shape just like that. Now here, for this one, the color was a blue solution and it's got a charge, so this would be aqueous as well. This is a yellow solution or a yellow green solution, you can say. The last one we need to look at is the NH3. So we need to see what happens when we add NH3. NH3 is a bit of a weird one because in the example we just saw here where we introduce a new ligand to a hexaaqua complex, all the ligands are pushed off. But for copper it doesn't do that. It's very strange. So we're going to take the hexaaqua and we have the 6 just there like so, the 2 plus, and I'm going to react this with 4 NH3s. I'm going to show this then on the next line so I don't run out of space. We push off four of the H2Os, but we leave two of them behind. That gives us then four of the NH3s now inside the structure, and we've kicked off four H2O to complete our balancing over here. Don't forget our charge, which is 2 plus, which means this would be a solution. As I said at the start, if it has a charge, assume it's a solution. This would be a dark blue solution, and you need to be aware of that. So why this partial ligand substitution? Don't worry, you're not expected to explain that at A level. The actual explanation for that is much more complicated. 
What you do need to be aware of is, because you've got two monodentate ligands here and four there, so a two to four ratio of your monodentate ligands, you need to be aware that this can now show cis-trans isomerism. It's the cis, if in the octahedral shape, these H2Os are 90 degrees apart, and it's the trans if these two are 180 degrees apart. And you need to be aware of that also for OCRA. I hope this summarizes well for you all the copper chemistry that you expected to know for the OCRAA level. If you have any other questions, then uh, please feel free to tweet us at ASFC underscore chemistry or leave us a comment below. Otherwise, happy revising.